All right, so you're back on this channel. You're on that zone to learn more about the world. This is the highlights channel of the Ranveer Show. Enjoy this video. Hit the like button and subscribe for countless playlists and countless videos that will enhance your mind. Kind of linked to Mata's this whole concept of asuras, danav, demon. It's always there in the Mata stories, one way or the other. And honestly, it's there in all the Puranic stories, etc., etc. Again, the question to you is: Firstly, you know the if the Puranas are actually based on history, and I believe they are. You believe they are. The listeners believe they are. Why were asuras and danavs only concentrated around the subcontinent? And they should have probably been there all over the world. And either way. even if they were just concentrated in the subcontinent what or who were the danavs or asuras and all these demonic entities in all our stories you know the uh, our uh, in the ancient uh, way actually we had uh, we had concepts of uh, geography that went beyond the indian subcontinent so there were various uh, dwipas so actually they existed outside the subcontinent as well uh, among the things also that's happened in the modern day is uh, we indians have imbibed many of the western approaches you know the simplistic good evil black white mm. um so we tend to see asuras as quote unquote demons which is a very loaded word right uh and which is why you know if you ask around many indians would actually think that uh, you know asuras would have green skin and mm. with horns and you know maybe a trident i mean even in amar chitra katha yeah. is depicted like yeah, that yeah uh, or a trident l- l- trident was seen as something negative in the abrahamic way i mean in the indian way lord shiva is a trident you know so uh, uh and in the puranas it's not that asuras are described as green skinned and with horns you know the there were asuras who were very good looking There were asuras who weren't good looking. Uh, there were devas who were good looking. There were devas who weren't good looking. There were asuras who were very good, like King Bali. Uh, there were asuras who weren't that good, like Mahishasur. There were devas uh, who were very good, like Lord Agni. There were times in which the devas did not do such good things, like Lord Indra at times, right? Uh, uh, we see Shurpana Kha in a certain way, you know, from the Rama and. uh when actually shurpanaka was actually quite beautiful right mm. the way she is described uh that we see her with claws that's what we think shurpanaka means but actually shurpa means a winnowing basket and if you see the you know the ulta side of the winnowing basket it's very smooth like this and nakha means nails so shurpanaka literally translates as manicured nails <laughs> okay so she was fashionable right so we imbibed many of the western things and we are using that lens to judge a very nuanced uh, approach uh many have forgotten this is there in the puranas the devas and asuras were actually cousins right or step brothers in a way because two different mothers but the same father mm. right uh so it wasn't you know that that god devil you know the western approach the middle eastern approach that we have absorbed it was very nuanced in a way uh and which comes back to the point that i made uh, earlier about that we didn't have a judgmental god who will decide that because you are a jealous god you worship me so you'll go to heaven you didn't worship me it doesn't matter how good you are you'll go to hell and burn in hell for eternity it wasn't like that and that at least to me sounds a little childish right mm. our our approach was it's all in your hands right you will decide what happens with your life and if you are an asura as pralad was right uh but you do noble deeds you will receive the blessings if you are a deva and you do negative deeds yes you will get face the consequences of it right do, do you think uh, it was just like a different sect of people like they were tribe? that that is the point that they were cousins right and, and there were times when the asura was most powerful there were times when the deva was uh, was most powerful i think with you once on one of our past episodes we discussed that asura could very well also kind of be linked to ahura yeah which is uh, the persian uh, concept persian in- god and do you know that the opponents of the ahura uh, you know what they were called in zora not islamic persia zoroastrian persia daiva mm you know so but they saw it in a much more nuanced way all our ancient cultures so things in a nuanced way uh, 
basically maybe this could have been that when we say the word deva we were referring mm-hmm. to the kings or the evolved is people is that which in has India. light okay right. uh that that was that was uh, that was the approach but uh and asuras are those who were out of tune with what the thing was uh, so I mean, that is one of the concepts there are various concepts maybe truly it was just india versus central asia <laughs> possibly but in ancient times actually central asia was was pretty indic in its approach uttar kurus for example mm. uh where and they were uh, you know among the oldest lord ganesha temples etc are actually all in the steppe lands in central asia mm. uh you know what the turkic you know turks are originally from turkey you know yeah. that right they are originally from central asia so what is the turkic word for idol do you know idol as in murti but where does the word but come from i'm assuming sanskrit buddha hmm. okay because the turks were actually buddhist they converted to islam quite late and their form of they converted to islam around i think 10th 11th uh, century so uh, mahmud ghazni's probably father or grandfather was buddhist mahmud ghazni was turk many of our invaders delhi sultans mughals they were mughals were turko mongols the delhi sultans were turks uh they didn't speak urdu they didn't look like ranveer singh um, to us mm. they would have looked you know chinese uh, mm. they weren't actually chinese but to us they would have looked mm. that way because they were they had mongoloid features from central asia um now uh they were actually many of them were hindus many of them were buddhist you know so we had actually influenced many of them as well and these concepts were spread throughout southeast asia was was uh, hindu uh, china japan were buddhist so many of these concepts had actually spread uh, yeah. across the world i'd love to know some stories you know from some maybe like a parsi expert like a zoroastrian mm-hmm. expert about what their outlook on daivas or devas was it would be lovely to know yeah. and because see even zoroastrianism is you know is a very high philosophy very intelligent uh, religion and i love exploring uh, uh, their philosophies and even in that region you know in uh, for example there is an ancient uh, uh, ancient tribe in the middle east called the mitanni and they were maybe 2 1/2 3000 years ago uh, and they were almost certainly not indian of indian tribal origin uh, but uh, they used to start their treaties with a prayer to lord indra and lord varun mm. right uh, it's very interesting you know how concepts could have spread among the most popular religions for uh, roman soldiers was mitraism and where does mitraism come from mitra so which comes from zoroastrianism and and vedic uh, vedic uh, yeah. hinduism so many of these concepts had spread across and like i said it was a much more nuanced approach mm. uh, to life not a simplistic good evil asuras are demons all bad devas are you know all good no there was nuance mm. across all mm. one last question in this asura danav angle you know mm. in mahabharat there's a story about how bhim kills uh, one particular rakshasa mm. who eats uh, a lot of food and then also a human being like a village has to send mm. uh bakasur what do you think this actually was was it was a cannibal warlord or something i think many of them were also probably uh you know allegorical you know so for example you remember in the, in the rama and lord krishna a uh, lord ram uh in the rama and kills uh, a dana in the forest in the dandak forest whose entire body was essentially a large mouth right and then uh uh how he kills him and then releases him from his curse and among the allegories that was uh, you know that was in that was this was this was a man who had no control over his appetite mm. right our modern human beings that way do we have no control over our appetite we are destroying much of mother nature we are destroying the earth to buy brands that frankly we don't which aren't really giving us happiness we keep changing our phones every 2 3 years uh perfectly good phones uh, companies design it that way also so that you are uh, you know they'll slow your phone down after 2 3 years so you're forced to upgrade we are keeping on consuming things and destroying mother earth for it and we aren't even finding happiness mm. so are we in that sense that danav you know <laughs> who've lost control over our appetite mm. uh because consumption cannot be the only purpose of life right yeah. there's value to it i'm not denying it you know but it can't be the only purpose of life how do we find that uh, balance once again i think some of these stories are perhaps allegorical yeah 
Hundred uh, percent. I also think that this is not the first Kaliyug. There's probably been many Kaliyugs on yeah, yeah. this earth itself. Yeah, yeah. No, that th- that is actually true. And in our tradition, yes, certainly. Uh, so there's uh, because there are various Manvantars, you know, and and age is uh, fit into many of those Manvantars. We have uh, a different Ved Vyas in each Manvantar. Mm. Uh, so yes, there are. It goes through these cycles. Yes. Yeah. If you enjoyed this video, just know that this entire channel is full of playlists that will take you down different pathways of learning, all sorts of subjects, all sorts of genres, all sorts of guests. But the one commonality: lots of knowledge. Enjoy TRS clips.